Okay, in this Blender 2.7 tutorial for advanced beginners, I'm going to show you my workflow for working with weight painting. And I've showed others, but this is uh, there's some other techniques in here that are really useful. So you, normally when you come up here and you have this, I'm in weight paint mode on this object here, and I'm in add mode, so I can come over here and paint like that. Or I can click this and go to subtract, and I can subtract from a weight up in here like this but a lot of times I don't paint like that that's one way to do it but I'm, I'm always looking for a little more control and the r reason being is that you can use these vertex groups because weight paint applies to vertex groups if I go back into object mode with control tab and I go over to here to the upside down triangle and look at the vertex group it is just this one vertex groups but the values are actually set in this as well they're kind of one and the same if I go into edit mode here I can set them. In fact, I'm going to set them back to. I'll just set them back to zero for the moment. Let's just, since I have zero here, I'll just assign it like this. And then when I go back into weight paint mode, there it is. It's I've assigned everything to zero, which is all blue. And then if I come up here and add, then you can see where I'm doing by painting like this. So vertex groups really matter for lots of things. I mean, one of the most basic things would be say adding hair particles. So I go over here and add a particle system into hair particles and you can see hair emits everywhere from all the all these vertices that I have in here but if I come down here to vertex group and I use say length and I pick my vertex group then it's just going to emit it from that area where that where the weight is painted on that mesh so this applies for a lot of things for physics effects soft body effects I mean, just all kinds of effects. So vertex groups are really powerful. But there's, uh, so let's turn this back to, uh, well, I'll get rid of the particle system. And I'll go back into weight paint mode here, into edit mode first, and I'll reassign it to zero. And then I'll go into weight paint mode. All right, so there it is, a blank slate. So instead of directly painting, like in here with a brush, what I tend to do is I paint a couple different ways you might not be familiar with it. And these are really useful techniques. Is one is that I hold down the control key and the alt key. And so I have both held down. And then with the left mouse button, I just pull back like this. And I can basically add a spot to it. And that's dependent on this weight and the strength, of course, as well. What kind of spot you're going to add. I'll crank up the weight. I want to, really, you know, weights. It's going to be a, get me to a red spot as I go. If I had full strength, it would be red. It should be red. There it is, red like that. Okay, so that's a great way. And the resolution of that is dependent upon your mesh underneath too. So that matters. Now the other thing I also paint with is with gradients, and these are really powerful. So now I'm just going to hold down the Alt key only. And now with the left mouse button at the same time, I'm going to start dragging it across. And you can see I'm pulling a gradient across this whole thing like this. And not only could do it, you can start closer or farther. You know, if you start here like that, you can see where the gradient starts like this. All right, I'll control Z that. I like to start out here. Feels like, and then as you get it, you can rotate the gradient as well. So this is how I said it. And then you have the other option down here. You can change this to radial. And you'll have to just experiment. You can see how it's changed it in that sense. Yikes. There it is. You can see the, road, the curvature to it. So all these little things really help. And it's a lot simpler for me to try and generate a gradient this way than it is to try and do it with a paintbrush up here. And it's, or some cases I'll do it with uh, just in the... Well, I'll show you. I'll go into here into edit mode, and sometimes I'll do it with the Alt key, and I'll do an edge select like that, and then I'll just set the values directly in here. You know, maybe I want to pin this, set this to one, and I'll assign it, and then you'll see it back in weight paint mode, like that. There it is. There, like that. So that, actually, that edge is pinned. So we can see that if we do say, let's add something like a, something simple like a wind effect to this object. I'll just put it over here. Shift A. Add physics. Add effect. Wind. Okay.
there it is and then I'll do RY and tilt it up go to the physics tab crank up the strength a little bit like this and press alt A oh because they don't have anything applied to it let's make them a cloth object okay and get a get that vertex group alright and then with the wind we'll crank it up and you can see it's blowing the wind across there but this piece is pinned in place so the whole thing can't move like that in fact even this far side doesn't want to move too much let's crank this up a little bit so the far side's not moving and we can verify that let's see wait, what weight paint mode looks like on this thing that's because it's pretty solid back in here on this side as well so of course I could just subtract that out I could subtract this edge I'll just control subtracted that well this is still held so now the whole thing is going to move and there you go all right well that should give you a pretty good idea as to how to get control of these things see if since that's not completely pinned down you can see it wants to get pulled out of there as well so, but these really help. All these little tricks really help depending on what you're trying to do in the engine. Okay, well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.